So you like mysteries, huh? Well, then you gotta go where the stuff that dreams are made of is kept. And that's audible.com. Go to audibletrial.com slash IBRT for a free audiobook from classic mysteries like Dashiell Hammett's The Maltese Falcon to thrillers of a contemporary cut like The Girl on the Train by best-selling author Paula Hawkins. Whether you like dead heiresses in the solarium or hot Tommy guns in the alley, audible.com is your source for mystery. That's audibletrial.com slash IBRT because only a cheap gunsel would pass up a free audiobook, right? audibletrial.com slash IBRT. Following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Box Radio. And here, of course, is the main cabin. It's uh, it's a little cramped, isn't it? Well, uh, you said you never owned a boat before. Uh, Not this big. No. Well, trust me, uh, this is a pretty roomy cabin for a vessel this size. There's room to sit and have a cup of coffee. A nice sleeping quarters back there. Oh, and you're not going to find a better price. Yeah, I know. He keeps saying. I just think more about more and more about a, a, a pontoon. You ever see those pontoons? Oh yes, yes, I have. They're they're real slick. Oh, but this boat has history. Uh, the Mary Reeves was sailing in this lake in 1915. Oh, built by a millionaire industrialist from the cities for his wife. Yeah, about that name. Uh, about was... the stories they say she ran rum during Prohibition. That's so. Uh... Oh, impressive, huh? Nah, I, I don't like rum. But the name, if I bought her, I could change it, right? Uh, well, yeah, I guess. Because I, I was thinking something like Gone Fishing or The College Fund. Get it? <laughs> yeah. Because we're spending the kids' college fund on this here boat. Right. Not really, of course. It's still in the bank. I tell you the truth, I doubt we're going to need it for one of them. My boy, Hunter, I love that kid, but he's dumber than a bag of hammers. Um. So, uh, uh, what do you think? Uh, well, it's a beautiful tug, I'll say that. Wonderful. Uh, well, maybe we should go up to my office then and... Uh... What was that? Uh, uh, nothing. Uh, my office is right up here. Hey, did you see that? No, I didn't see anything. Man, I could have sworn that mug slid right off the table. Well, we're on a boat. Uh, it's rocking all the time. No, the lake's real calm today. What the... Rocking back and forth all you, the time. You had to have seen that. Sorry, you said something? That mug slid right along the shelf and stopped dead like a hand was pushing it. It must, uh, must be the tides. What? Tides? We're on a lake. Yeah, but a really big lake... Whoa. What kind of boat is this? Oh, glad you asked. Hey, it's a 36-foot... Wait, 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 what do you got on this thing? Is this, is this boat haunted or something? All right, mister. I don't want any part of this. We could work on the financing if that's the problem. Are you kidding? Get me off of this thing right now. Fine. That's the way you want it, huh? Well, hey, guess what, Captain? I've got a surprise for you. Ow! So there I was, 30-something, divorced, and a victim of the economy. So I did what any independent, self-respecting woman would do after being laid off from the job she'd put 10 years into. I ran home to mother. That would be plenty traumatic for most women, but my mother is something else. Melody, come and get your wheat germ before the organic honey congeals. Or should I say some time else? The 60s to be exact. But mom stays active, running the local newspaper. The Nutcase, Volume 1, Issue 1. Dateline, Icebox. Mayor silent on the pothole issue. What corruption is he hiding? My daughter, Mary, hi. And I keep busy keeping up with mom. But 
We've done some good in our little town. In fact, the three of us have solved so many local mysteries, the townspeople have taken to calling us... The Scoop Sisters in Color Starring Rachel Adams as Mary Victoria Olson as Jasmine and Karen Schickel as Mel Tonight's episode... The Spook Skiff. The Scoop Sisters will be back right after this. Mother, please. I won't. Pretty please. Ugly no. You're not being reasonable. And you're attempting to censor me. I can't be a censor. I work on the same side as you do. You remember why you made me editor? My little spelling problem? No. It was for situations just like this. You even said so. You sat me down, gave me a cup of tea, and in a deliciously lucid moment, you said, Melody... I need you here to rein me in when I go overboard. I only said that because you were considering that other job. The five hours a week at the school district? I'm still going to work on the paper. Well, you never know. Had you taken that job, you could have gotten too busy to even be here most of the time. Uh, Mother? Yes, dear? I took the job a month or four issues ago. Oh, So, I reiterate, you made me editor, among other reasons, because you wanted me to keep you from writing columns like this one, where you call the mayor a painted hussy, doing in back alleys like a gin-soaked Victorian courtesan. Too strong? Mother, the issue is whether or not she should raise parking meters from ten cents to a quarter. They've been ten cents since I was little. That was a long time ago. Hey. Just back off a little, and I don't appreciate you choosing Hooker as your means of skewering her. Skewering who? The mayor. Grandma's overdone it again. Oh, I read that column. It was a little rough, Grandma. So you two gang up on me now, huh? And what's wrong with a little allusion to ladies of the evening? Would you have used that if the mayor was a man? Well, of course not. Then it's sexist, isn't it? Oh, (laughs) Melody, how can that column be sexist? I wrote it. I don't think I follow. Melody, I'm a woman. I can't be sexist. I'm part of the oppressed class. Um, how was your day at school, Mary? Pretty good. Oh, Mom? I need your help for career day. Okay, what do you need? Would you come into civics and speak to the class? Speak to the class? What do you mean? Well, I wrote this paper about people I respect in their careers, and the teacher liked it so much she wants you to come in and talk to everyone. You wrote about me? Oh, that's so sweet. What was it about? You know, how mom overcame the layoff, got back in her feet, all that junk. That's wonderful, dear. And all the work she does in the newspaper. Oh, You know, how she keeps the books straight and makes sure we make the deadlines and keeps stories like this thing on the mayor from going all... Uh, That sounds great, Mary. I'll be happy to speak to your class. Thanks, Mom. I'll be in my room. I'm sure she... That is, you know, she didn't mean it, but she... All publicity is good for the paper mill. So be sure to make a good impression when you go talk about how you run things around here. Mother. Maybe you should wear that nice conservative blue dress. You know, the one that makes you look like a corporate mouthpiece. Uh, excuse me. Oh, thank you. Can I help you? Uh, is this the shopper? Uh, I want to take out an ad. Well, we're not the shopper anymore. We're called the Nutcase. Although we are considering a name change to All About Melody. Mother. Uh, can I help you, sir? Classified? Oh, no, no. Not nice and big. Oh, half page, at least. And the headline should read, Haunted Boat for Sale. What? Here's a picture of her. Oh, the Mary. Oh, that's the tub. Uh, you know what? 
Well, I took a tour a few years ago when they used to tie it up at the docks for Founder's Day. What's this about it being haunted? Oh, don't you know, dear? The Mayor Reeves is famous for being haunted. Something about running rum during Prohibition. Oh, that's right. Uh, that story is Captain John Talbot Remington was shot by a Treasury agent trying to uh, uh, bring a shipment of Canadian whiskey to the American side in 1922. He, he's haunted my boat ever since. You know, I could have sworn the Lewis family owned it. I bought it from them four years back. Alan Fisher. I'm Jasmine. This is Melody. Oh, pleased to meet you. Uh, well, seems to me I took you on that tour a few years back. Oh, possibly. I only had eyes for the boat. Oh, it was beautifully restored. I put 10000 of my own money into that tub. <sighs> Bought it from the Lewises for a song. Figured to spend the summers taking tourists on cruises. Uh, last two summers, been lucky to make back fuel costs. The economy? Well, didn't help, I'm sure, but uh, mostly it's the, the crazy stuff. Uh, the things rattling around, uh, engines failing... Oh, one time we actually started to sink. Uh, let me tell you, that party wanted their money back. <laughs> and this summer I decided to sell, but that crazy ghost won't let anyone on board. Uh, so I figured, if I can't beat him, might as well make the most of him. <laughs> if he wants to rattle around the cabin when folks come aboard, I'll just go find folks that enjoy that sort of thing. Uh, you know, uh, ghost people. What people? Oh, uh, Mr. Fisher, this is my daughter, Mary, also the online editor. Hello. Oh, quite the family operation, huh? That's right. You know, Mr. Fisher, I think we can do better than just an ad. How would you like a story about your haunted boat? A haunted boat? Cool. Uh, I guess. Uh, you think that'll make a difference? Are you kidding? I can put that online and have 10,000 hits by breakfast. Online? Uh, oh. Oh, meaning people from all over might see it? And I know just the forms to alert, too. Oh, sounds good. Oh, you ladies know your stuff. Then it's settled. We'll come down, take some pictures, do a regular interview. Um, there's no school tomorrow. Can we go tonight? Tonight? Why not during the day? Oh, no, Mother. We have to get down there after dark. I'll have a night vision camera, and audio equipment, and all kinds of stuff. We might even get lucky and catch a full outline apparition. Well, if it's all right with Mr. Fisher? Oh, I don't see why not. So, um, you want to go down to the boat tonight? Sure, Grandma. It'll be fun. Well, I I'm sure it will, honey. I'm... yes. Is something wrong, Grandma? Uh, no, no, sweetheart. Everything's... everything's fine. Careful, honey. That cost us last month's entire sales run. Is that the boat? Ooh, it is kind of creepy. I don't know. I, I think it's rather nice looking. I think a pall of sadness hangs over its head. Or whatever boats have instead of a head. That's enough. Set up your gear and get some shots. I'll go find Mr. Fisher. I still don't see why we couldn't come down here after it got really dark. Your grandmother insisted. But she's cowering in the car. She's not cowering. She's... Well... Mom, have you ever seen her like this? Okay. No. Something's up. Maybe she's afraid of ghosts. That's silly. For you, it's silly. I don't think Grandma has a limit to silly. I'll go back and check on her. You start. Okay. Mom? Uh, are you Okay. I'm fine, dear. Why do you ask? Oh, there's that draft again, chilling me right to the bone. <laughs> Toodles! Mom, 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 wait a minute. What are you doing? Nothing, dear. I just felt a draft, and I have a little cold coming on, and I think I've been out in the sun a bit much lately. Mother, it's night. Oh, the mosquitoes. There's plenty of wind. I haven't been bit yet. Uh, someone's smoking a cigarette nearby. I don't smell anything. Would you accept someone smoking a cigar nearby? Mother. Smoking ham? Mother! All right, give. What's going on? Nothing. You are as white as a sheet. You know, I don't like that expression. I mean, who even has white sheets anymore? Mother. Ours are taupe. Mother! All right. I'm sorry. Are you... Are you scared of the ghosts? Well, not exactly. 
I'm just scared of what they might do to me. There's no such thing as ghosts. Oh, leave it to you to say the least helpful thing imaginable. I'm sorry, Mom. I just... <sighs> okay, I've never seen you like this before. You're really scared, aren't you? Your mother is frightened of ghosts. There, I said it. But why? You've always been so... so... <sighs> Brave? Fearless? Well, I was going to say oblivious. You've always just kind of rolled over things before. Remember that time I was 16 and those guys started bothering us at the diner in Morris? Oh, those nice boys. Mother, they were a biker gang. But I guess that's my point. You've always kind of seen the best in everything and everyone and just sort of gone your merry way. I've never seen you afraid before. Melody, I need to confide in you. Okay. I... I see dead. What? Well, they, they generally don't like to be called dead. I think spirit folk is the current term. Mother. Well, I'm so glad they stopped asking to be called corporally challenged. <laughs> that was a mouthful. Mom, back up. You see dead people? Well, not all the time and not every place, just some places. And let me guess, they ask for your help on the earthly plane so they can pass to the next realm? No, mostly they just want attention. What? Well, it's boring being dead. When they find a sensitive like me, they can't help themselves. You're a sensitive? Melody, does that really surprise you? Well, now that you mention it, no. I have to really watch where I go and what I do. Spirit folk can be just so annoying. Annoying? It's kind of like when I was a senior and this little freshman named Bobby Reynolds wouldn't leave me alone. Tiny little fellow. He looked about ten years old, but I guess I guess he was in love with me. Oh, pestered me in the halls, at every dance. It was sweet, but annoying. So your experience with those in the next plane of existence is similar to being pestered by a ten-year-old? He was a freshman, dear. He just looked ten. Mom, this is ridiculous. Being pestered does not add up to you hiding in the car. What's going on, really? You promise you won't judge? I promise. I know the captain. I... Wait. What? Captain John Talbot Remington, master of the Mare Reeves. We... Met. Met? Communicated. Communed. So he pestered you? Well, not exactly. He courted me. What? He was born a gentleman in 1882. It was called courting then. Are you trying to tell me that the ghost haunting that boat is... Has the hots for Grandma, yes. You know, Mother, just when I think I know you... So, you see, I can't go in there. I, I broke his heart. When? Well, the tour I was on a few years ago. We met then. Oh, he swept me off my feet. Oh, the ghost and the lady. It was so romantic. I came back several times just to talk with him. Well, then I knew it couldn't work. I mean, he was dashing and everything, but we couldn't even dance without me accidentally walking through him. Oh, boy. So I left. He can't leave his boat, so we never saw each other again. Well, I guess. I guess I don't know what to say. Do you want to stay here? Yes, if that's okay. It's fine, Mom. I think Mary's already on the boat, so I'll just go check on her. Uh, Mom? Yes, dear? That's the Mayor Reeves, right? Yes, dear, the one pulling away from the dock. That's Raymond's boat. I wonder if... It's Mary. Honey? Mom, I'm on the boat. Did Mr. Fisher take you for a cruise? I I wish you would have asked permission. No, Mom. The boat... The boat is driving itself. The Scoop Sisters will return. reach him. What kind of man doesn't have a cell phone these days? Well, I doubt if Mr. Fisher could do anything now. We need another boat. 
who do you know that has one? Sybil Johnson has a canoe. Oh, it's a beautiful birch bark one that her grandfather built. Mother, something fast. We need to catch that boat. But we're keeping up in the car just fine, dear. That's because it's hugging the shore, thank goodness. Mom? Are you okay, honey? I'm scared, Mom. This is starting to freak me out. Do you see how it's steering and everything? Honey, maybe you should go up to the wheelhouse and and see if anyone's there. No! All right, all right. Calm down. I am not going up there. What if no one's driving? Okay, think. Think. I'm diving off. What? Mary, no! Mom, we're only about 20 yards from shore, and I swim that far at the beach all the time. Besides, I bet the water's not even that deep here. You could get hurt. I'm on board a boat being driven by a ghost. I'm willing to accept a decent amount of hurt. Wait, there you are. I can see the car. I see you. Slow down, Mother. I'm doing it now. I can see a dock just a little ways away. There she is. What's she doing? She's going to jump off, Mother. Pull in next to that cabin. She's going to swim up to that dock. Oh, my. Okay, I'm getting ready. Be careful, honey. I... I'm going to hang up, Mom. I... Wait a minute. What's wrong? What's happening? We're slowing down. Melody, they're turning toward the dock. Mary, can you see us? Yeah. I just... Weird. What is it? The engine's cut out. We're just floating toward that dock. Mom, I don't think I'm going to dive in. Thank goodness. It's like someone's driving right to it. Mary? I can see you. Okay, Mom. We're just coming up to the dock. Be careful. He always was a wonderful pilot. What? Okay, come on, honey. Do you need a hand? Mom? Here, let me hold on to the side. You can step right off. Mom, I can't go. What do you mean, honey? Just step up on the side and then we're going to go... I mean, it's weird. I don't feel like I'm supposed to go. Besides, maybe I could get a picture. Mary... You were terrified just a few minutes ago. Yeah, but that was when the boat was driving itself around the lake. Now I just... I don't know. Come on board. What? No! No, seriously. Come on board. You too, Grandma. What was that? Oh, Melody. Have a little imagination for a change. Are you all right, dear? Yeah, Grandma. Just a little freaked out. Well, that's all right, dear. I'll come on board. Mom? Come along, Melody. I'm going to need you for moral support. What's happening? Well, unless I miss my guess, Raymond wants to take us for a night cruise. Mom? What do we do? I don't know, dear. I I guess we just enjoy the scenery. We have been circling this lake for five hours. I think we even crossed over to the Canadian side more than once. You want to try explaining this to customs? Are you really involved with the captain, Grandma? Oh, involved is much too strong a word. Well, why didn't you go up there and ask him to bring us back home? I wouldn't know what to say. Flirt with him. Mary! Mom, we've been out here for five hours, and Ghost Boy's too scared to come out of the wheelhouse. That's ridiculous. Think how I feel. I can't get boys to talk to me now. Apparently that kind of shyness lasts for all eternity. You... boys don't talk to you? Mother, this is not about me. Right, right. It's obvious that Captain What's-His-Name has a crush on Grandma and is too scared to come out and see her. So unless we want to stay on this boat all night... All right, all right. All right. I understand what I must do. Really? Because I don't. I'm going in there. Are you sure? What are you going to say? I have no idea. Just like every other relationship I've ever been in. Maybe we should think about this. Oh, I have no doubt we should. They've been in there a long time. Yes. No. She's been in there. Come on, Mom. I know. I should just suspend disbelief and go with this, but... I don't know. The ghosts? No. The mother. I never know what to believe with that woman. I know what you mean. 
Moms can be very frustrating. It's just... Hey! Whoa, we're moving. Yes, we are. Can you see the shore? I don't think we're far from it, but it's pitch black out there. Wait, right there. It's our car. He's taking us back to that dock. I think so. Mother? Are you okay? I'm fine, dear. Raymond is taking us back to the dock. Did everything... I mean, did you two work out... I don't know what I mean. I think we came to an understanding. Mr. Fisher should have no trouble selling his boat now. Oh, that's good. Your ghost doesn't mind being a spook for hire? Oh, don't let him hear you say that. Just so long as everyone's safe, we're coming up to the dock now. I'll get us tied up. Be careful, honey. I will. Are you okay, Mom? Oh, I guess so. Affairs of the heart are never easy, even when the guy is dead. No, I imagine not. I understand, I understand. Yes, we'll, we'll pull the ad right away. Wow. He was upset? He was very upset. We should offer him his money back, Mom. What, is it our fault that Mr. Fisher's haunted boat isn't acting haunted anymore? I don't know. But he's getting visits from all kinds of people wanting to research the Mayor Reeves, and they're all going away disappointed. He's being trolled. He's being what? Mary can explain it better, but it's not nice. Well, I still say it isn't our fault. Raymond is very sensitive, and I know he wouldn't like to be paraded around like a performing dog. Well, maybe he's had enough and moved on. Moved on? You know, passed to the next... Do whatever it is they pass on to? Yes, I, I think he's passed on to the next stage of existence, if that's what you mean. Mother, what was that? What was what? Your coffee. The mug just slid across the table. Oh, there's a draft in here, I guess. It did it again. Oh, this is an old house. Uh, the foundation will settle. Damn it. Mother, is there something you want to tell me? What? Oh, I don't know. Maybe more coffee? Yes, yes. Uh, more coffee is definitely what we need. Don't you tell me that you invited that someone is in this... Mother! Melody! Don't be silly. After all, as you always say, there's no such thing as ghosts. What just broke in the kitchen? Oh, nothing, I'm sure. I'll just go and... Raven! No! Mother! Oh. What did you do? Uh, Melody, I, I, I think it's time you know. I believe I found someone special. You're dating a ghost? Well, living with, more like. What? He's very sweet and a perfect gentleman. And he has no place to go after that business with the Mayor Reeves. Mother? And as you always say, there's no such thing as ghosts, which means none of this is really happening, right? Don't try and twist my own logic on me. Oh, Melody, you'll barely know he's here. <sighs> Just when I think I know you. Yes? Do I have a choice? Well, we can't really make him do anything he doesn't want to do. Sounds like every relationship I've ever had. Sure, your ghost boyfriend can stay. Oh, I promise. This will be the last complication you ever have to deal with from me. That would be too much to hope. Yes, it would. M Mother, d did you hear that? Hear what? Oh, heaven's sakes alive. Jasmine had not told me what a charming daughter she had. You can't hear him right now? Hear who, sweetheart? Hush, my dear. <laughs> this shall be our little secret. Oh, no. You have been listening to The Scoop Sisters in Color. Tonight's episode, The Spook Skiff, featured Tom Bement as Mr. Fisher and the ghost. Jeffrey Adams played the tourist. Rachel Adams was featured as Mary. Victoria Olson starred as Jasmine. And Karen Schickel was Mel. The Scoop Sisters' The Spook Skip was written and directed by Jeffrey Adams. 
This program, copyright 2010 by the Icebox Radio Theater. All rights reserved. Visit them on the web at iceboxradio.org. Thank you.